All right, guys, today we got a whole bunch of military stuff to take a look at. This is from Todd from the Washington National Guard. Um, he sent two of his unit crests. Um, every service member has an affiliation, and this one is with uh, the 319th Explosive Ordnance Disposal. So the bomb squad guys, this is what the crest for that unit looks like. And then we also have this one, another affiliation with a mother unit. This is the three, I'm sorry, the 898th engineers first into battle uh, i don't know if i want to be first but uh, anyway there we go very cool crests and he sent this this is a a pacific lock and he says that the unit supply sergeant bought these to secure their uh, striker fighting vehicles so very cool this is a quite a different animal than the locks that we used to buy um, we bought the master number threes and of course everybody knows those can be raked home fairly quickly this is a different animal, guys. This is quite um, a much more difficult lock. These Pacific locks contain all security pins, and usually it's serrated spools, serrated, and they might even throw in a standard in there. Um, not very often. This is also a five-pin lock, unlike the Master 3, which is a four-pinner. So now we have all security pins and then an extra one. So a lot, a lot different. This one is not spring-loaded either. Again, unlike the Master lock, so... You turn it, not quite 45 degrees, pops open, and these contain, and have always contained, ball bearings, so no shimming. Um, I have actually picked these before. This is the 100G, and I have taken these apart. I've tried to, I, I actually cut one open, and it took me forever. There are eight hardened steel rivets going all the way through this guy. It took me forever to cut those and to pry it apart. I also tried cutting the shackle with some 48-inch and bolt cutter. Now, it is possible with a 48 inches, but these are very tough shackles. So I don't know what kind of hardening they have, but these are really tough, tough locks. And I guess to, you know, to lock up a striker fighting vehicle, that's exactly what you want. So uh, Todd, I, I fully understand why you had trouble picking these, but let's go over it real quick. Um, let's grab a tensioner. All right, now the first thing we want to look at on these guys, you notice how these rivets kind of stick up a lot? I've made this mistake more than once. I just mindlessly stuck my tensioner in there, got ready to go. And the problem here is that the tensioner sits down lower than that rivet. So if you pick it and you get a fault set, and usually you do on these because of the security pins, it'll push over against that rivet and you won't realize that you've got a fault set or it could even be open and you'd never know it because it's pushing over against that. So that's why they make the long end. So I know it's a little harder to control, but stick the long end there. Try to push and keep it parallel to the lock, and it will clear those rivets. So that's what you're looking for. Uh, these are fairly wide open keyways, so I am still going to use a 15,000th because I like to when I use, uh, try to pick security pins. So I'm going to choose this guy. It is the V09 from Multipick. It's a DeForest Half Diamond. And let's see what we got here. All right, now when we pick these, let me zoom in a little. Hopefully you'll be able to see what we got. Ah, Bill, always overdo it. All right, notice how that rivet, let me move that shrink wrap out of the way. We're almost on the rivet already. Luckily we're clearing it, but what I want to do is put uh, on the tensioner. We'll put a lot of tension on it, and then that'll force something to bind up. And you can get away with that for your first pin. I didn't feel anything. Let me push a little harder. There he is. It just happens to be the one right behind the tensioner. I, the first time through, I thought I was actually trying to pick the tensioner, but I think that is the first pin. So apply a little tension and see if you can get him picked. And I got a nice click and I felt a little bit of turn on the core. Now you notice if we were using the short end, we already would be interfering with that rivet. So that has already paid off for us. Got good clearance. Okay, now we have to go to moderate or light tension because of the security pins. And let's see if we can find the next one. That was pin two. I got a little click. That's pin five. He's binding. Got a good click. And again, it's fallen into a little bit deeper fault set. Pin three is binding. And notice I'm getting a little bit, see how that tension wrench is moving? 
It's a little bit of counter rotation, and that was a spool, but it was a shallow spool because it just clicked into place. And again, look at that little bit deeper fault set. Trying to find another one. Okay, at this point, they, they're a little springy. So what I'm going to do is apply heavier tension. I think we're probably caught in a spool because of that deep fault set. I'm going to then position my pick on each of the pins and give it some pretty heavy torque against that heavy tension. I'm trying to get some feedback. And right there I have it. I'm getting some counter rotation. So I'm hung up on a spool on pin two. Come on. So you've heard some stuff clicking there, and that was because I apparently picked them out of order. We've dropped a couple of pins. Let's find them back to moderate tension. And pin five is now, feels like he's back down. Okay, I got to click on him. Pin four, I'm getting counter rotation. Got a little click. Three is back down. Okay, I think I got him again. He's still giving me counter rotation, so that spool dropped all the way down. And there we go. Got it open. These are really tricky locks. I am so happy the U.S. government and the U.S. Army went to buying these instead of master lock number threes. These are so much more secure. But you know what? Even though I know how to pick these, I am not going to try to break into any strikers. I really don't want to ride in those anymore. Last time I hopped out of one in Iraq, somebody shot me through the hip, and I just have bad memories of riding around in strikers. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Todd, thank you, sir, for the lock.